All right, we have to wait for another two speakers. By now, please uh, take a few minutes before we start. And may I call on the presentation, please? Yes, please. I would like to uh, welcome all the speakers and attendees here to the new idea in education webinar number two, Maker and STEAM Education. Yes, this is the second webinar for all of us. And next slide, please. Yes, we will start by uh, in five minutes here. I'm the one sitting the MC of today. Next. Yes, um, I don't want to uh, uh, provide more detail, but I would like to uh, invite you or the attendees. Uh, if you have the question, please use the Q&A window for the question in advance if you would like to ask our speakers or panelists. And also all the speakers and panelists will use the Q&A window also to respond to your questions or inquiry. Yes. And next, please. Yes, we will start by uh, soon now in two or three minutes and we will end the session at 11.30. And at that moment, we will also make announcement for the e-certificate request that form. Yes, thanks. And for today, we have the photo campaign competition as well. May I call the next slide, please? Everyone who cannot join us here in the webinar and you cannot take a photo. So we also offer the photo campaign here and you have to post your photo on the Facebook and then we will select the five winners and you will get the souvenir here as you see. And yes, if you uh, join us here, you may get a chance to get the souvenir. We will send you soon. Yes, thank you. And next, I think. It's the time, almost the time to start our webinar. Yes, everyone may have your attention and I think we will start our webinar with this new color in three, two, one. We will online yep. now. Good morning, everyone. My name is Orawan Sivanjian. It's my honor to be the MC of the event today, 
Welcome you all to the Maker and STEAM Education, the new ideas in education webinar number two. This is the webinar that co-organizer between the Ministry of Digital Affairs from Taiwan and Sunil Senet with the support of the Ministry of Education of Thailand. This webinar is using the AI for the translation into 30 languages as demonstration using AI as a tool for the teaching in the age of AI. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce the Wordly AI Guide for you to uh, using it for the translation. And today I would like to invite Mr. Joey Yelt to explain and how express that, how to use the AI. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, webinar. My name is Joey, and today I will have a quick guide on how to use the Wordly AI, AI translation. So right now, what I'm going to do is to invite um, all of you to join the Wordly app, which I'm going to do right now in three, two, one. So everybody here should have received a pop-up notification um, telling uh, you to join the AI webinar. And once you click on it, um, the translation should be appeared on the right-hand side of the Zoom. And uh, Dr. Arwan, is it okay if I share my screen? Yes, please. Okay. So I'd like to share my um, screen for a bit, just to show mm -hmm. that uh, where you will receive uh, with the link. So. All right. So um, just now, um, after I click invite, um, all of you should have received a pop-up screen like this one. The Wordly is inviting to use you to use a Zoom app and you should um, click view. And also, um, if there's any other you know, um, questions or if you need any help, please just leave in the chat room and we can um, invite you to use the Wordly app again. And also during the Wordly app, um, uh, we will also do it on a face uh, on a kind of like a a link, and this link is a another pop up window, and all of you can change to thirty different languages, as you can see here on my screen. You can change to um, Chinese, English, um, Indonesian, Korean, Portuguese. So there's um, thirty language here that can be um, selected using um, the AI translation. So uh, because today in today's webinar, we will have some experts from um, Taiwan and we can use, you know, explore this AI tool to help to translate for the webinar. And later on, I will provide this link uh, in the chat room so everybody can also see for those who are on uh, Facebook and if those on Zoom cannot be accessed. Okay, I think that's it for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry, for the introduction. And right now we can use the AI as a tool for our translation today. And to the one who join us in the Zoom, you can follow the step of the, uh, that uh, Joey just introduced to you. And for the, uh, the Facebook, it will be like automatically to translate into the English, yes. And if you would like to join us the Zoom, please click join us by the Zoom link that we already sent to your email, thank you. And next, right now to officially begin this webinar, I would like to invite Dr. Atapun Sang Pahalasi, the Permanent Secretary from the Ministry of Education, Thailand, on the stage to deliver the welcome remark and welcome of this panel to the second webinar today. Dr. Atapun, the floor is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, and all participants from Southeast Asia, Welcome to the second installment of the New Idea in Education webinar series. Today, we embark on an exciting journey exploring the world of teaching in the age of AI, maker and STEAM education. The first webinar was held on April 21st, 2023 with great success as it reached more than 20,000 participants in more than 40 countries. For this instrument, we anticipate reaching more, especially 
from rural areas across Southeast Asia. I am delighted to see so many passionate educators and stakeholders gather here to discuss and explore the transformative power of AI maker education and STEAM education that play a crucial role by providing students with hand-on interdisciplinary learning experiences that help them develop critical thinking and problem-solving skills. As we navigate the dynamic landscape of education in the 21st century, it is evident that technology, particularly AI, has become a vital part of our lives. The webinar aims to be a catalyst for innovation by fostering a deeper understanding of how these emerging technologies can reshape the way we take and learn. In the context of Southeast Asia, where diversity and rich cultural heritage exist, there is, is an enormous potential to harness the power of AI and STEAM education to creativity, critical thinking, and problem-solving skills among our students. Today, we will be exploring various topics, including maker education, STEAM education, and best practice and success stories. As we immerse ourselves in these discussions, let us remember that the journey toward a transformative education system is collective effort. Our shared experiences insights and perspectives will surely lead the way for meaningful change in our classroom and communities. Therefore, I encourage all of you to actively participate, ask questions, and engage in meaningful conversations throughout the webinar together. We can build a futurity education system that equip our students with the skills and knowledge they need to develop in the ever changing world. Once again, thank you for joining us today. Let's embark on this enriching educational exploration and inspire each other the shape a brighter and more innovative future for education in Southeast Asia. My sincere thanks to CMEO STEMED, together with the Administration for Digital Industries, Taiwan, and the National Science and Technology Development Agency of Thailand for organizing this event today. And it is crucial for teaching and learning today in the new era. Thank you. My heartfelt thanks to Dr. Adhun Sankahawasi, the Ministry, the Permanent Secretary for Ministry of Education Thailand, for his warm welcome remark. And yes, today we have uh, more than uh, participants over uh, 20 countries joining us here from Southeast Asia and beyond. And next, I'm pleased to welcome and um, invite Mr. Zhang Hua Lu, the Director General from the Ministry, sorry, from the Administration for Digital Industry, Minister of Education Affairs from Taiwan to deliver the opening remark. Sir, the, the floor is yours. Sadika, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Taiwanese government, Administration for Digital Industries under the Ministry of Digital Affairs. I'm glad to welcome you to this event, Teaching in the Age of AI, Maker and STEAM Education. 
New Ideas in Education webinar. This event represents a significant milestone in our collaborative efforts to promote maker and the STEM education in the Southeast Asia region. As we all know, the 21th century has brought lots of advanced technology, and it is our responsibility to ensure that our education system keeps up. I'm confident that this event will encourage and inspire educators to explore new ideas and approaches to STEM and make education to promote innovation, creativity, and the critical thinking. I would like to extend my great appreciation to the organizers for making this event a success. And I believe this webinar will serve as a first step for further cooperation and partnerships between Taiwan, Samia, and the Southeast Asian region for the progress of STEM and the maker education. Thank you very much. Thank you, Smith Chan. And next, I would like to also introduce and invite Director of the East Administration for Digital Industry for Ministry of Education, Ms. Fung Chien Chu, to deliver the opening remark. Mr. Fu Chen, please. Hi, Sadika. Good morning, everyone. I'm Fu Tian Xu. I'm very honored to join this webinar. As our Director General Richard Liu said earlier, this is an important milestone jointly organized by the Thailand Ministry of Education, Simio Stan Ed, and Taiwan's Minister, Ministry of Digital Affairs. Administration for Digital Industries and the Institute for Information Industry. We hope that in the future we can continue to share Taiwan's case and experiences in maker and STEM education with teachers from around the world and discuss the possibility of cooperation in maker education. We hope that. Today's online seminar can inspire more educators to explore new ideas in STEAM and maker education together. Once again, thank you so much for inviting me here and wish today's event a successful outcomes. Thank you, Ko Kong Kiap. Thank you, Mr. Fu Tian Shu, the Director of Administration for Digital Industry, Ministry of Digital Affairs of Taiwan for your support of this webinar. And I would like to use this opportunity to call all the speakers and moderators to have a group photo here together. Please turn on your camera, please. Thank you. All right, I think you are ready to give me a big smile. May I call on your big smile in three, two, one. Another shot, please. Three, two, one. Yes, I think we got uh, the nice shot. I will share that one for you as well. Thank you. And everyone. I would like to welcome you to the session one of our webinar today. Uh, we would like to invite our two speakers here, Dr. Glenn Giorgio, the director of Senior Siega from the Philippines on the stage, and also Dr. Ted Ho, the founder of the Fab Lab Taipei from Taiwan on the stage here together. For this session, two speakers will also share ex their experience and expertise on what they have done so far. Yes, for the first one, I would like to 
invite Dr. Grant Georgio, the director of Smil Sierra from the Philippines, on the stage and deliver his presentation. Dr. Grant, please, the floor is yours. Uh, good morning to everyone. We are all excited for this uh, webinar, and I'm also I I I thank the organizer for remembering us and could we could share also our experience at the same time our ideas about this uh, very important topic on the era of AI, what's the teaching modalities that we should do, how we could maximize it. And uh, because, you know, as the time of uh, in the era of AI, I always consider is they have a negative and positive effect on our children in their formation of learning. It's like a knife. You could use a knife for, 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 for cooking, for cutting, for efficiency, but you could, some people could use knife to, in a negative sense. So what we are doing now is to look at it in a different way, how we could maximize it in our teaching. Okay, I will try to, to share my slides. On this, okay, I hope you could see it uh, thoroughly. Yes, Dr. Brown. Okay, so now I'm changing my, I'm looking at it in a different way because of, it's covering my slides. Okay, so I, I, will, I will talk more on the curricular imperatives um, of maker and STEM education amidst the artificial, insemina, uh, artificial intelligence era. So again, before I go to that, I'll just share you where I am coming from. I am from the Simeo Circa, which is the Southeast Asian Regional Center for Graduate Study and Research in Agriculture. It's a nonprofit organization, of course, from uh, of Simeo. Started one of the oldest member or regional center. It is our, our mission really is to be uh, to, to elevate the quality of life of agricultural families through the livelihood and access to modern networks and innovative uh, markets. Uh, at the same time, our mission, our, our, our really vision is to be a leading enabler and champion of excellence in agriculture and rural development in Southeast Asia. Okay, so for the, the, for the last five years, or actually it is already a fourth year, this is our five part of our five-year plan. We call it ATTAIN, which is Accelerating Transformation Through Agricultural Innovation which really is more on using the uh, industrial revolution 4.0 or including the AI, the, all the technologies available to accelerate transformation in our farm area. In the next slide, I'll just go back again to our main topic, which I want to, to share to everyone. Uh, this is more on the curricular imperatives. Uh, and, and maker and STEM education in the in times of artificial intelligence, or I call it Industrial Revolution 4.0. Now, if you look at the, the, the goal of education actually is to develop learners who are technically equipped for knowledge, acquiring information concepts and principles on the subject matter and the, and the skills which refers to the ability to, uh, to apply the information in a given context. These are very important to contribute to the national and the regional development, but we need this character, which is described how uh, one engages with be and, and behaves in the world. So we need this good character is here as the central desirable outcome in school moral enterprise. So the role of educators, therefore, uh, should go beyond the transfer of knowledge and skills, but also uh, instill or inculcate values and virtues that will make learners more morally upright in their decisions and actions. So uh, if you look at the societal impact 
of the artificial intelligence or the fourth industrial revolution. Actually, this becomes a character education, therefore becomes an even more important in this time as this characterized by change, disruption, society brought about the fast pace of technology development and innovation like AI, you know, it is really characterized now, they call it the uh, VOCA, unpredictable patterns, uncertainties, complexities, and ambiguity. And now we have Eben Dabani, which is, we call it the generation of uh, br uh, brittleness, uh, anxiety, non-linearity, and incomprehensible. So it means a lot of our problems becomes complex, but the good news technology is here. So this is uh, which I want the, the, which I will emphasize that the best sources now could now be neither. The best resources now is not the, the capital of the rape or the labor, but those people that can create new ideas and innovation. We have to outsmart as human being, we have to outsmart the chat GBT, or we have to outsmart the artificial intelligence. Those are the values of human being, right? Which is the character. <laughs> Sorry. So these are the challenges posted by the era of artificial intelligence or uh, uh, they call it industrial revolution 4.0 now becomes because of this technology, people tends to use the robots instead of humans. So reduce manpower due to automation, information technology, uh, security issues. We have problems with security. A lot of, uh, we spend a lot of money to secure our platform. The problem of reliability and stability of technologies, especially in the third world where we have unstable power, internet and all those things. And we have also a portion of our society, we are reluctant to change, especially the aging population. We have to be more producing more with less. We need to require, and these investments needs a lot of capital. So establishing this needs a lot of computers, storage, and all those sorts. We need more value-driven research and a lot more. So what is what what I am emphasizing here is the ethical concerns need to be addressed at the school levels. Ethical concerns. So the use of this, there should be some form of uh, self-regulation or school regulation or to, to mold the character of the students, how to, to maximize it in a positive way. Okay, so if you look at the character of education defined by Lekona in 29, 2009, they call it the, the genuine, the character education is the genuine deliberate effort to help people understand, care about, and act upon the core ethical values. So character education is more valuable under this uh, artificial intelligence era. So if you go further, the role of character education uh, in this era of artificial intelligence, actually at the minimum, the role of character of education is, the, is to spark creativity among learners to address the new ways of thinking and new ways of doing things. So as I always mentioned, we have to outs outsmart the AI because it's now available, outsmart those things. So you have to think differently uh, in, this, uh, in this manner. And for us applied in agriculture, anyway, if you say STEM, STEM, it means agri uh, the A there could be arts or agriculture, but in here I will emphasize the arts will be uh, science, mathematics, uh, engineering, agriculture and mathematics, uh, uh, those will I emphasize. For, for agriculture, we need to develop a generation of entrepreneurs who are innovative, resilient, partners-driven. So agripreneurs, I call it even the farmers, we have to 
transform them to be transformers from farmer to transformers. So at, uh, at circa the 21st century also requires a sector to apply to adopt a highly automated and the more technology based uh, independent workflow. So circa's vision for agriculture sector, for instance, is towards the application of modern farm technologies and practices that will increase productivity and efficiency. This is how we want to go to that direction. <clears throat> now, I just want to share to you this, uh, uh, the, the quotation of, uh, from David Buller, uh, a science philosopher. He says that modern science and technology like artificial intelligence or genomics are more are advancing at a very tremendous pace. His question is, will our moral strength keep up? Will our moral, so this is the question. Can we control it? It's really uh, nonlinear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of uh, problems here, but will our moral strength keep up? So this is the one I want to emphasize here. So this is the proposed uh, character formation for the next generation leaders, which education, agricultural education, or STEAM education is very important. <clears throat> so character for the next generation leaders in times of uh, Agri 4.0 or Industrial Revolution 4.0, or in, in the era of artificial intelligence, we have mindfulness, curiosity, resilience, fortitude, ethics, and leadership. These are the characters we need, which are fading away in our generation. One by one, I may say it's the mindfulness. So this is the character that we should develop, purpose, purposefully paying attention to the environment and the peoples around, people around and self-awareness. So we have to, as we do, Things the children or students they have to have the character of mindfulness. Next is curiosity. So let their minds explore. So continuous desire for learning, drive for innovation with a high degree of enthusiasm and high mindedness. This is the ability to engage in conceptual and disruptive innovation, allowing for creative creation of new ideas or new ways of working, new ways of thinking, new ways of deciding and operating in a positive way. <clears throat> the next is, of course, resilience. We need really resilience. This is the ability to persevere and the uh, resourcefulness to overcome adversities, adapt to change, as they always mention. It's not the brightest or the wisest or the strongest that will prevail, it is those who could adapt to the change. The next is fortitude, which is very important. Persistence to act despite uncertainty, capable of taking risks. So this is entrepreneurship. We have the ability to engage. The next is ethics. As I always mention, ethics is the ability to identify and conduct behavior. Behaviors that are more are morally upright and better to individuals and societies. So this is makes us different from robots. There should be ethics, uh, a lot of ethics here. Okay, and uh, next is the most one of the most important is leadership management, relation uh, relational process of empowering people to collectively achieve positive change with a high level of purpose and moral. So we have to go back with a high level of purpose and moral. <clears throat> so how do we inculcate or instill this character to our schools? Curriculum incorporating character education in all aspects of school life and the pedagogy we have to, which I'll be mentioning later, experiential learning, communication, communicative context, specific teaching approach, promote collaborative learning systems, teachers, student, parents with the aid of appropriate technology. 
So if I go to the detail, I just want to share to you. This is just an example. I'll be sharing two slides to you on curricular development for agriculture, which we are doing here. These are the characters. If you have agriculture major students and those are non-major students for guiding values, we need an interdiscipl interdisciplinary depth of knowledge, which AI could help at the same time uh, collaborate experiential learning, which I'll be mentioning like gardening later, integratory, integrating theory and practices, systems thinking, skill development practice and social skills, linking real world with classroom. So community building and on, -cam uh, on, -cam on and off campus and uh, adaptive curriculum management. For those who are not major, we have ecological uh, stewardship and uh, practice, praxis, uh, strong local economies, healthy people and communities, food security, collaborative teaching, experiential and integrative learning and civic engagement. If you go to the next slide, I think it's my last slide for curriculum development, curriculum theory, uh, curriculum theoretical framework. We have to have the uh, social constructivism, experiential learning, uh, transformational learning, critical theory, uh, uh, participatory learning, and action research. And for experiential teaching activities, field work, exposure trip, applied production uh, classes, internship mobility, applied research project, farm field schools, community partners, uh, field works, and, and the like. And for, and the one of the most important is evaluation, competency, self-evaluation, peer review, team performance, reflective essays, and critical uh, critical reflections, faculty, student, community, industry partnership evaluation, and we could really uh, look at it with uh, on the pipe piece, which is the publication, patents, people, partnership, and profit. Quickly, I just want to share to you what we are doing at, uh, at Circa, just to give you an, one example of a Circa School Plus Home Garden project in the schools that we want, uh, we, have, we are piloting. Just want to show you the School Plus Home Garden project, uh, learn uh, lessons that we have. Uh, this is more in an enlightening national government and other relevant agencies, institutions on the potentials of school gardens or agriculture to address the nutritional needs of children while serving as a viable alternative education policies or hub for teaching and promoting and appreciating of agriculture or nature at a younger age. So this is how they learn and also the lessons from the school plus home garden projects that we have. Experiential learning allows our deeper appreciation of agriculture and good nutrition. It also develops a sense of responsibility to share what they learn in the school garden, which they think will really benefit their <clears throat> families and communities. Next lesson is parents' involvement in the project helps sustain the project while also providing an important link between the household and the school towards a collaborative learning experience with the parents and the students. So children show how innovativeness and resourcefulness they are. They use their arts also in their gardens to make it more exciting in designing the school and home gardens in consideration their immediate environment and limited resources. <laughs> the fourth lessons is the project instilled among the children the positive impact of good nutrition and commitment to work together and value the hard work. So these are the platforms that we want to for, like this is just an example of school garden that molds the character and creativeness of students in times of AI. So my final message uh, here is, uh, is really in the age of AI or industrial revolution, the ultimate goal, of course, character, uh, the skills are there. We could uh, work together. The teaching is beyond boundaries now. 
but we have to mold the character education towards building human resource capacity of initiating and leading development that is knowledge and skill and of course social transformation which is character resulting to a better fairer and more humane society just to give you uh we have at circa uh in our institute our, our center we have a sharing share hub for agriculture and rural innovation for the next generation it's a digital museum that we uh want to to show you uh integrative learning space on agriculture 4.0 designing to inspire young people and we have an agri timeline uh southeast asia digital agriculture technologies and this agro robotics if you want to and we have agricultural uh, digital agricultural platforms also and we have all these things i'm just showing you to show that we have something so my point here is really the skills are there we have to use ai in our teaching at the same time character formation is very important thank you very much and good morning wow this is a very wonderful of the grant i have learned a lot from the stem and plus a as agriculture here from smio siega Yes, we have learned from the perspective of the Philippines. And right now, we would like to move to the experience from the Fab Lab in Taiwan. And I would like to invite here Professor Dr. Ted Hu. Yes, please, he's on the stage. So uh, let me share my screen. Yes, please. Yes, Dr. Ted Hung, he is the founder of the Fab Lab Taipei from Taiwan. Yeah. Please join me to welcome him. Okay. Uh, hi, today, uh, thank you for having me here. My name is Ted. Uh, is, is sounds clear? Is it okay? Yeah, uh, today I'm going to share uh, uh, my experience on like what I've done in the past 10 years. So, uh, my name is Ted and the host of Maker Fair Taipei. And also currently I'm the director of a Taiwan Makers Association. Um, about my background, I study engineering and architecture in school and focusing on digital fabrication and design. After living in Los Angeles for 10 years, I came back to Taiwan and started working on Fab Labs in, um, in 2013. And currently, uh, I'm also the host uh, producer of the Maker Fair Taipei. And Los Angeles is a city like known for its mixed culture and people. What I've learned from the city is that when you uh, bring all these different cultures together, news and exciting things come out of it. So when I go, when I start the first Valley in Taiwan, I, I, have the, I apply the same approach to run the lab. Uh, Fabulous Taipei is not just a lab full of machines. It's like it's like a community made up of uh, very smaller communities. So uh, in the beginning, we have uh, a lot of people interested in making 3D printer. So we make more than 200 3D printer were uh, made out of our lab. And also we have bio art community uh, in our lab and also there's a, a sketch community that they people just gathering and then drawing together. And also there's a ergo keyboard DIY community and donkey car Taipei, which is a self-driving car community. All these kind of different community mixed together and they surely uh, develop a lot of interesting happen. Uh, and, but Fela is, also, is not just confined by one lab. Uh, we, uh, it's, it's, it's a global network. So each year, like uh, thousands of labs around the world will come to a place and meet. Like this year, we just came back from Bhutan. Mm. And all these labs are sharing their uh, knowledge share, and sharing their experience and learning from each other. So, uh, Fabla Taipei itself uh, not, is not just uh, 
a community based in Taipei. They also connected like very closely with a lot of labs around the world. Um, and also we have a Fab Asian Foundation, uh, which is a, a very loose type of community that uh, uh, or, or like format by all different labs around Asia. And we each year, we also have an annual gathering somewhere in Asia. For instance, like here, you can see we, have, we used to have event in Japan, in India, in Korea, and, and Vietnam. Uh, so how, how do, can we uh, nurture the creativity? Simply providing uh, ample freedom and support. One day somebody sees somebody from the sketch group, they see, uh, they think our labs are too blank. So they asked, uh, so they asked us if we can support their creation. So we give them, we just uh, supply them uh, enough paint. And okay, I might go backward. And this is the result. Without knowing like where they're gonna paint and where's a, and where they're gonna make. And they just make our lab look like this right now. Um, also, a lot of interesting happen. Like uh, we right now we have two labs in, and uh, this has come out from another lab called New Taipei City to a library. Uh, this is when a, a leather crafter meets a, a machine maker. So they come up with some new idea that they help the Leather crafter to to speed up their like production process, and this is another uh, example that uh, a group of DIY computer case enthusiasts use leather crafting technol techniques to create a steampunk style computer case. Their creation not only stood out in the global competition but also won the first prize. So a lot of uh, uh, like unconventional creation happened in the two labs we, we manage. Uh, for instance, here there's uh, here's you can see some uh, uh, these are some crowdfunding successful crowdfunding cases, uh, and we uh, uh, when when they are when they those these projects are being created, we. A lot of time we didn't know what they are doing. They just uh, making things like, uh, and they just pop, pop out like uh, miraculously. And like for instance, you can see uh, this is a, a simple puzzle. This is a, a, a successful crowdfunding campaign, and they they and then now become a very very successful design company, and also like a dental material company, they are doing the 3D printing of a dental related project. And uh, the sound frame is a picture frame that if you pull out the, uh, this is stainless steel uh, card, it will play some music or some sound out of it. And also there's a interactive donation box. If you put donation to it, the, the machine will create some interactive features or or even like a pop out some bubbles. And uh, there's, there's a, a 14 years, there was a 14 years old kid beginning his own 3D printer nozzle business in our lab. By the time he, uh, this is, by the time he reached 16, he left school and to pursue his own electrical car project. Uh, this is how it looked like. And and now and now he has he's 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 at the age of twenty one. He has another million dollar business of his own, and in, and is collaborating with Google. So we asked him like, how did you pick up all these skills? Uh, and he 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 replied, just Google it. So well, well, this might be a real case, but it did prove that if you got passion for what you interest, you can, you can, you, you will able to carve a path. The world is changing and changing really fast. 
education was once uh, a privileged luxury, Attain attainable only if you managed to secure a spot at the top tier school. It was, it was within those walls that you could connect with exceptional professors, instructors, and teachers, gain entry to extensive libraries, and engage with a classmate who are driven to excel. But then the internet came along and flipped the script. Nowadays, if you can type, if you can search, you've got the whole universe of knowledge at your fingerprint, finger at your fingertips, sorry. But when I, when I was in high school, back when I was in high school, there was no internet, no Google, and no, definitely no AI. So I'd always be like, what, why do we, why do I even have to learn these? Some subjects are just really boring. And I don't know, I don't know what these things, these kind of knowledge can help for my life. And so uh, I was always have this kind of wondering and then, and then, but nowadays it's the things change, everything. Uh, in, the, in the past, it's just feel like, all right, while well, we did this, it's just to, uh, the, goal, the goal is just to pass the exam to get a diploma. And that will surely guarantee a successful career in our life. But now everything changed crazily fast from stuff like internet of things, cloud computing, big data, AR, VR, all the way to self-driving cars, metaverse, and even chat GPT. In just about 20 years, the world has done a complete uh, 180 degree. Having a diploma doesn't guarantee success anymore. So what do we teach, what should we teach students right now? And what can we make them able to survive in the future? Uh, in the age of searching of chat GPT, memorizing a lot of information might not be as important as it used to be. Instead, how to util utilize the knowledge you learn and come up with some unique ideas that could solve some real world problem is the ability students really need. To distinguish human and GPT for now, creative is still the key. So I took Fab Academy course in 2014 and participated in the program since then. It is an ident it, it is a identical course as a how to make almost anything class at MIT. And it is the core course of uh, Fab. Uh, MIT professor Neil Gersenfeld teach Teaches, teaches this course directly. Uh, every first half of the year, he taught this class in Fab Academy Global Community, and second half of the year, he taught this class at MIT. Uh, basically, this class is uh, teaching you like all the digital fabrication skill, and also uh, each week it will cover a topic. And at the end, all the students are required to, to make a real project. And the project is proposed by the student himself. So the student come up with a lot of uh, uh, strange or creative ideas. For instance, like on the top right, the student make a bag that can absorb and recording the screen. And also it can replay the screen uh, to release her uh, ten uh, tension. And at the bottom one, the student make a dress that uh, with a lot of spine. When people come too close to her back, those spines will like will raise up and to protect her uh, backside. So projects like these are like a lot of time that they come out there from their own personal need. And you might not be able to find those kind of product on the market, but then, but if you, if the, the idea is just to all let all the, creative or maybe some naive ideas come true. And the in the middle top in the top middle pictures, one student make a project that's uh, to let the parrot to to interact with computers. So this might uh this this kind of project that not only students have to make, they they have to document it and also open source it online. Uh, so how, 
how can you, how can one effectively instruct student to, to create something that has nobody, nobody have ever made before? So it is really a good, uh, it, is, it is really a big question. Uh, nowadays, teaching and learning are very different than before. Uh, for, for the teaching part, like most of the things you can find online, online, and maybe some teachers are just better than other teachers. They are, they're, or, or maybe different, different students that are suitable for different kind of teaching. So what Fab Academy do is like, all the contents are open source online. Uh, this is a schedule for Fab Academy. Uh, so it is a very intense and very condensed course. Within half a year, you have to learn, you have to learn all the skills. But the, if you go to see the video, to go to watch, watch your video, you will see that uh, the course itself is not just actually teaching any particular skill. In, uh, instead, it's more like giving you a broad uh, concept of what kind of tools and what kind of uh, skills you can learn, like in terms of making, uh, making what things happen. So like, for instance, you can see like uh, uh, February 1st is a computer aid design. Students only have one week to learn computer aid design and it cover like more than 80 softwares. Uh, basically, this is just uh, Professor Neil Gersenfeld, he just like building a tree and give, give you a guidance like, well, where's the, where's are those techniques can uh, apply to the field you want? Uh, in this week. And student, uh, this is a very like self-learning course and also self-development course. Within six days, students need to make something and they also have to document uh, the process. And the, in the first week, students are required to make uh, his personal website. And in the rest of the semester, all the students need to update uh, the, their, their own website. And also not only document how they make the thing, how but they also are encouraged to document uh, their fail failure and also to describe or think about like why you fell this way. Uh, what it's actually doing is leveraging the benefit from an internet. Mm. This is the Fab Academy content. Like you can see all the class. All the all the class are like uh, uh, will up be uploaded to the inter to this website after a day, and um, no, okay, I go backwards. So and all the content within the past ten years are all online, and this this course is keep evolving. Like uh, every years are are quite different. There are some. You can you can get uh, to reach the the latest technology and latest latest tools and latest information about digital fabrication. So what Fab, Fab Academy is doing that is like we we collaborate like virtually collaborate with now and past for the student. Uh, you can see there's a like a Google Google searching column like at the bottom. Uh, this is actually a special search, a search engine just to search within the Fab Academy documentation. So if you want to looking for some project, let's say uh, I want to make a go-kart I, or I want to make a interactive uh, uh, interactive uh, uh, game gaming machines or like uh, maybe something that any kind of uh, Creative project. You can just go there to search, and you can find. Uh, have ever have, have has there anyone already created something similar before? Uh, so so you can actually virtually uh, step from uh, somebody's shoulder. Like you can download it and you can reproduce it, and and maybe and accelerate your project development process. This is what it, what Fab Academy is doing to encourage like virtually collaboration through the internet documentation. And actually, in fact, the, the, 
the most expensive part for education is to answer students' question. To teach teacher class to, to, to how to make almost anything, especially it's hard. So Fab Academy developed this uh, 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 system that how to solve students' problem. Students not only can access their, uh, their, talk to their local instructor, they also have a regional, like we, we have Asian region school, they are able, they're available for students to, to solve students' problem. And also there's a global open time once a week. And at the end, you still have an MIT professor to back, to back everybody up. Uh, and this system works quite well. So most of the students, when, when they were having a problem, they, it's easily get solved. So how to teach your makers? Again, like nowadays, it's, I think uh, evaluation on the student learning is, is, should be, is, is something should be changed. Like just to memorize or like, test, like hand, handwritten exam is, is not uh, suitable for this day anymore because memorizing uh, are not the critical thing right now. Like a lot of information you could just get online and you could, you could uh, get them in just one second. So, so what I learned from Fab Academy is like, uh, first we evaluate student by their result. If, a, if they propose an, propose an idea and they get it work, and that will, you can see the result, that will definitely work. And student can use their knowledge to, uh, to, solve, to, to really solve some problem they discovered. And so at the end of the day, I, I believe that uh, for maker and STEAM education, the ultimate goal is just to make students believe in themselves, they can make anything. Then thus they can, cre they can, they can create some, they can create something that nobody ever created before. And that will be the only, the, the best value that we can, the human are different than the machines. Uh, thank you. And also, uh, Make a Fair Taipei uh, will happen on November 18th and 19th. Uh, if anybody have a chance, please come to visit us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ted Hun, the founder of Fab Lab Taipei in Taiwan. And yes, the Make a Fair in Taipei will be organized on the November. So be rich to welcome the all to this event as well. And next, um, I would like to call on our speaker as well to join the frame here. Please, Dr. Grant from Sumasega. Yes, and also I would like to uh, introduce our colleague here to moderate the session here, Q&A, Mr. Joey and also Mr. Masuro here from the Triple I Taiwan. Yes, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, thank you so much, you know, Dr. Glenn for the, and Mr. Ted for the wonderful sharing. You know, I, I believe, uh, I think both of you shared a very important um, topics, which is related to AI, you know, as we are in the age of AI right now. And you mentioned that, you know, uh, memorizing, you know, or a uh, university degree is not as much as important, you know, in this age, but you know, creativity, you know, uh, building human resources and initiation is much more important. So uh, I'd like to just to have a, as a question for um, Dr. Glenn uh, about the, um, your sharing. So, um, you, you know, you mentioned about uh, AI. So I'd like to ask, you know, in what um, ways, uh, maybe because there's a lot of teachers right here from the Southeast Asia, maybe they don't know how to use the AI tools yet. So in what ways can AI technologies be integrated into um, actual projects within the makerspace or STEAM, maybe in the R&D development or the innovation process? And how can these students lead these efforts? Thank you. Yeah, this is uh, actually very challenging, especially in Southeast Asia, especially the other countries in Southeast Asia. Even our teachers needs to be retooled on AI. And uh, I may say many of our teachers are even reluctant to use AI using even smartphones. They are already struggling using 
a computer. All the more if they use AI, they might be really one is threatened using it. And mostly, maybe the students will be the one who will be teaching them on, on this aspect. So that's, that's one scenario I, I, I could see. And they are even threatened that they may lose their job because AI, maybe they have the robots now, just like now at, at Circa. We just be buying two robots here to to entertain the visitors and to man our our museum that they will be so it's it's threatening to our, for teachers. Uh, what I we need really to have retooling. We have to show to them their importance. They have to. Uh, that's why it's still a transition. So we are not unlike Taiwan. Maybe they have this pub lab. They have all this. But now we, we have to start by <laughs> even introducing what is chat GBT and the power of it and the ethics of it, even using all those information. We have to start from that using the robots. That's why we have at Circa, we have the uh, Agri Museum, we have a maker space there. We have, uh, we have a Lego or robotics uh, cafe here where we will be introducing how to make robots at the same time using uh, the robots with uh, brains and all those sorts. So uh, we could talk a lot about uh, this one, but I, I think the most important now is introduce AI, introduce uh, digital technology uh, uh, to our teachers and even for our principals. So it should be at that level. We should not push too much. So, but at the same time, what I'm saying is the character formation is also uh, very important. If we, I'm, I'm, this is very foundational. If it's children or the kids will just go to uh, this new technology without the ethics, without the restrictions and all those sorts. But who will restrict? That's the question. Uh, those are the, we have to be careful about this. Thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think that, you know, all the stakeholders, right, between the government, university, students, they all need to really work together, you know, from the policy level, right, to the practical level and theory as well. But yeah, thank you so much, um, you know, for the sharing. And I believe that, you know, um, you know in the future of AI, I think uh, will be very much mainstream and lots of different new tools. And, you know, teachers are need to be able to accept, you know, and learn, you um, more with this. Uh, due to the time constraint, um, I apologize. Maybe I can only ask the one question. So I'd like to um, hand this over to Mr. Masaro for 10 minutes. Thank you so much once again, Dr. Glenn. Thank you, Joey, and thank you, Director. So um, I do have, uh, I think it was on the audience, um, we have the question for Ted. Um, first question was how about the cost and to the Mac lab? as your lab school. And I think the two second question was actually combined together. So uh, let me just uh, refresh that. So what about school that still doesn't have the internet network in Indonesia? Because that question was from the um, education of the Indonesia government. So that was asking, is there any, still many area that still haven't been touched by network? And for geographic reason in the mountain area, even there was no BTS tower, I think it was the base to seven um, stations. The network is still very poor. So Ted, I'd like to ask these questions from the audience, from the education department of Indonesia. Thank you. Uh, well, the cost of the lab is um, actually getting cheaper and cheaper now. As a most of machine right now, you can find some open source version and you could just pretty much download the, the design and remake it in other fab labs. So as far as I know, like uh, Indonesia also has some fab labs. There's probably one in Bali and one in uh, Jogja, maybe. Um, I'm, oh, actually, I, I am also, I, I, I will have a meeting this afternoon with a Jogja lab. They're making a, uh, this afternoon, they're make, they are making a fab, fab lab challenge now. Uh, this uh, I think in September. So uh, I think internet uh, constraint is it will getting improved. Like like several years ago, I think uh, internet speed are not so fast, and we still doing that. Like uh, and and also, but technology change fast. I'm sure that something will come out soon and to solve the problem. 
Absolutely. I think the infrastructure is only the very basic and also very mm -hmm. more important foundation about building all the STEM or make educations. But I think in right now we use a lot of the AI and the new technology and everything technology is evolving. So we were expecting there's more new technology to come out to fix the world's infrastructure. But thank you so much, Tay. You'll be here. So I think the most of the, the makers team are doing it because of the Mac Fair will be happening in the November 18 and 19 in Taipei. So please do welcome to have time to drop on Taipei. We would love to see that the more information about the and make a region in Taipei. So thank you so much, Tay, for your time today. Mm -hmm. Now back to the, um, Dr. Lawrence. Thank you, Masro. Thank you, Joey, for moderating this session. It's very fruitful. I think we still have the question on the chat box, yes, and Q&A, and also our speakers, Dr. Brent and also Dr. Ted, they will also respond to the Q&A box, yes. And also, um, if you have any question, please write the email to Dr. Brent from Studio Siega. Yes, he will be happy to answer your question. Also, Dr. Ted already shared with us his email as well, so please send to them directly. And yes, for the next session, I would like to bring you to the session two for today is the panel discussion. For this session, you will learn a lot from the experience, real experience from the classroom. Yes, from the higher education, from the basic education, or even in the primary school. Yes, and for this session, I'm pleased to invite my director, Dr. Krisa Chai Somsaman, the director of Studio Semet to moderate this session. Please, Dr. Lisa Chai, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Dr. Arwan, our lovely MC. Uh, first of all, uh, greeting from Simo Semet headquarters in Bangkok, Thailand. I would like to welcome everyone to the panel discussion on the future of maker education in Southeast Asia and beyond. In this session, we have about five very distinguished speakers who are very experienced in managing makerspace and implemented maker education in school, both in uh, Taiwan and in Southeast Asia. So the, the, let me, we welcome the five speakers through session. First one is Professor Yushan Chang. It's Professor on the Department of Technology Application and Human Resource Development at the National Taiwan Normal University in Taiwan. And the second speaker is Dr. Wen Cheng Shu. He is a teacher, well, especially mega teacher uh, from Daoxiang Elementary School in Hualien County in Taiwan. And the third speaker is a founder of the lead education, Dr. Wang Yu. And we also have uh, two across uh, different provinces in Thailand. Uh, two of them are one of these, uh, Dr. Apirat Titimon from the Fab Lab NASA. And the other one is uh, Dr. Vasu Taparangsi from Fab Lab NASA as well. Uh, so we will have a very engaging discussion for this session. So first of all, let's welcome the first, our first speaker, Professor Yu Shang Shang, Professor from the Department Professor Yu Shang will discuss on their how to turn make a skill into theoretical knowledge and apply them for theory to uh, the contrary to practice. So let's together welcome Professor Yu Shang Shang to the stage. Thank you. And may I share my screen? Sure, please go ahead. We can hear you clearly. Please proceed. Thank you. And the screen is clear. Uh, can you put it in a full screen mode? No. Is it clear? Okay. All right. Good. Perfect. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good morning. Thank you for having me here. Uh, my name is Yu Shan Zhang. 
Uh, I am a professor of National Taiwan Normal University. I am a real human being, not virtual, not generated by AI, you know? Yeah. Today, I'm happy to share our experience and ideas with you about STEAM and maker education in Taiwan. And I'm going to present in Mandarin. As you know, uh, from 2018, okay, the translation AI is work. Is working okay? Yes, you may speak in Mandarin now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, from 2018, Taiwan established Maker Education Centers. In 2022年,台湾将投入高中200亿台币,20billion,20dollars,来强化新兴科技和数位学习。这些经费的投入都是持续性的,可见台湾对于 Maker education and STEAM Shangdan 更重要的是台湾的科技产业和科技人力的培育。在美国2012年,奥巴马总统举办了白宫科学博览会,努力推动Maker Education以及STEM Education。希望有更多的 Maker Space Projects 以及 Mentors 台湾的政府透过教育部经济部劳动部很多部门的合作共同推动 Maker Education 现在大家看到的就是台北 Fab Lab 以及台湾推动的 Maker Education Maker Education 是一个主动学习的体验 它培养了创造力、批判思考、合作和问题解决的能力 Maker Education 为了学生迎接二十一世纪做好准备。这是一个感人的故事。二零一二年，台湾的年轻学生发现盲人歌手在表演台上不敢乱动，因此他们在鞋子。装上sensor 这解决了盲人的问题这件作品也获得世界八名奖的金牌 STEAM and Maker Education 强调 hands on learning 动手学习 我们从探究当中发现新的知识 我们也应用知识来创新设计，探究和创新设计不断的交互作用，就像中国古代哲学的太极，太极强调互相生长、互相应用、不断循环。
在 Steam 太极里面做中学 hands on learning 为基础 ，inquiry 跟 design 持续的交互作用 ，S T E A M 的知识也持续在。里面发挥作用。这里所看到的这个呃构想，有发表在 S S 期 S S C I 的期刊里面这里我们看到了学生他的学习是充满了刺激，充满了兴趣、主动性。这个玩具它利用到了动态平衡、重力、摩擦力的原理，再加上创造力，于是它就变成了一个 STEAM 的作品。这个作品融入了台湾的龙舟文化。台湾 culture of dragon boat festival 表现在这个作品里面。这是第二个 steam maker case case two。这是原住民电梯，利用 AI 影像辨识，根据不同的图腾图案，把包裹送到不同的楼层这里利用到的就是 AI image recognition， 《Steam Maker》Case Three， 我们举办了 AI 小车竞赛，学生的小车必须要。沿着路线执行任务，有非常多的女学生、女性的学生也参与了 AI 的竞赛。Steam Maker Case Three， 在这里，我们把 AI 融入到正式的课程里面。在中学阶段，初中跟高中 ，in junior high school and senior high school， 进正式的课程里面。融入到正式课程里面。上个礼拜，我们对台北市国小校长的 speech 主题就是 AI，generative AI。我们确认所有的160位的校长都会使用 generative AI。Keep going， 啊、呃，持续的努力。What is STEAM literacy？ STEAM 素养是未来的重要智能
它让我们积极、主动，并且自动自发面对未来。在非正式的学习里面，学校的社团、研习、竞赛，这个都是使 STEAM 学习更有弹性。在正式的课程里面 ，K to twelve 学生需要学习 STEAM， 所以正式课程的实施非常的重要。Thank you for your listening. And let's all improve STEAM maker education and inspire the next generation of maker, creator, and innovator. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Yu Shangshang. The very interesting, and I really like the mapping of the Tai Chi and the STEAM education and all the projects of the student are very. Awesome! I would love to go to Taiwan to see all the implementation of this project on Sunday. Thank you so much. Well, our yeah. second speaker is uh, Ti Chu Wen from uh, Daoxiang Elementary School in Hualien County, Taiwan. And Professor Professor Yu Shang, oh sorry, Professor Wang, Ti Chu Wen will talk about the secret of success in technical education. Yeah. Tisha Wen, please. The floor is yours. Okay.所以现在有看到我的荧幕吗？有的，老师，请开始，谢谢。好。呃，我是呃，我自己是呃，本来不是教育界的人，那因为做过各种工作之后，呃，因缘际会进到教育界。然后因为刚开始在国小，我是教电脑科技的。那因为在教儿童城市跟开放硬体太精彩，然后才会受到瞩目。之后被借调到教育处去推动国中小的创客教育。那也因为在线上线下的社群活动的非常热烈，所以
呃，很以生活的素养为核心。啊，我始终相信这一件事。那二零一一年，我是台湾第一个将开放硬体跟儿童城市放在国小资讯政课教学的老师。那后来，呃，因为教学太太深受喜爱，所以在二零一六年，我被借调到教育处。开始推展全县的创客教育，那每一年都办超过一百七十场的呃研习，然后组织我们花莲县的创客讲师团，然后并且在国家发展委员会的专案经费的协助下，所有的受过我们创客训练的老师，只要他想在学校教学，我们都让他可以获得设备的补助。那所以，所以也在讲师团的努力下，连续拿下四年的呃全国赛的总冠军。那在这四年，呃，在我戒掉了这四年呢，各单位的合作哦，谢谢各单位的合作，让我们在二零一八年的时候，全县的一百二十五所国中小都能够在学校有开呃儿童城市的一个课程。那在二零一九年，我们成立了呃第一个台湾第一个县级的花莲县等级的一个智慧教育中心。那创客推创客教育推动到现在，其实也差不多有十年了。那十年之间呢，大家都在精进技术，却没有人去注意到系统性思考以及啊创客教育的教材教法。那量变之后呢，一定会产生质变，所以我们提早了看到这一点。科技教育必须从技术性的教学提升到科技思考的境界。于是我们在二零二零年，在联发科技教育基金会赵克斯计划的协助下，筹备了科技教育的转型，将运算思维及素养导向这样的系统性思考植入在。科技领域的教材教法内，让学生不再只有学到纯科技技术，而是能够将系统性思考发展成为自己生活的素养。那目前课程已经准备的差不多，预计今年会在全线做推广。那在这个推广的过程中，其实要成功的话，呃，人的因素极其重要。那这些成功的经验十分仰赖坚强的团队啊。那这里面有三个很重要的核心哈，包括第一个是核心讲师群。那成功绝对不会是只有一个人可以做的，一定是要有一群人啊。所以我们呃除了成功核心的讲师团队之外，呃推动的行政团队以及团队的领导人是非常重要的。那在讲师团队的经营上，除了给予照顾跟荣誉之外，让新手的老师能够克服障碍，勇敢地站上第一线，跟我们一起战斗，其实是一个很重要的学问。啊，我就举例，比如说，我们曾经开了一堂新的课程，想要邀请呃郑飞老师，让他来带这个课。那一开始新的老师呢，总是会比较客气，所以就会拒绝我。那于是我就耍了一点小心思，我在开课的前两天打电话跟他说：“呃，这个课本来是我要上，那因为我身体很不舒服，所以请他帮我代课。那所以基于帮助我的原因，他就愿意第一次帮我代课。那第二次呢，呃，我就借。”借用这个长官叫我去开重要会议的理由，啊，就请他帮我代课。那所以基于帮助我的理由呢，他就愿意帮我代课。那后来第二次、第三次啊之后呢，他就很习惯，啊，很很心情上就比较不会那么抗拒。所以之后他就会啊帮我们开，帮我们负责这门新的课。那所以这样。在我们带讲师团队的时候，有时候是需要一些，呃，小小的心机哈，然后才会让你的团队非常的具有向心力，然后可以帮你一起承担责任。
那行政团队其实最困难的部分是要共荣共辱。那团队立德通常站在第一线，比较容易受到人家的关注。因此，呃，荣耀跟光环会集中在他的身上。但是在团队里面，协助核销、办理研习这些相关的行政的人员，他们的功劳也是很重大。那所以。呃，他们更是我们营运营运上不可或缺的助力。那因此，团队的 l e 呃 leader 在不能，呃，他是不能独占荣耀啊，必须将荣耀归于团队，这是很重要的一件事。那但是呢，在有状况的时候，呃 ，leader 必须要挺起肩膀来承担责任啊。那大长官呢，啊，比如说县长、呃，处长。呃，也应该要懂这个道理，随时协助团队来圆满这个人际关系哈。所以这一点其实是蛮重要的一件事。那这边我送给大家一个，呃，身为 leader 的重要的思考策略啊。那这个思考的策略呢，是古代啊，中国古代的道家的老子的思考哲学啊。我们看待任何事情，需要五个面向，这五个面向，如果你能够想到。推展这一件事情就能够很完美。好，那第一个是道，那道指的是你的呃原理、你的规律、核心跟愿景。好，所以做这一件事一定会成功的，呃方一定会成功的愿景是什么？方向是什么？核心在哪里？你要一定要先把握清楚。那接下来法的部分，它指的是呃，比如说创客教育，那创客教育的架构。它的内容，好，七年级上到哪里，八年级上到哪里，这个是国家有规定给你的课纲，好，这个就是所谓的内容架构的部分。那这个通常我们不太会去改变。那再来是数的部分，这个部分非常的重要，成功、失败与否，大部分都会在这个环节。啊，这个数指的是各种的战略、战术，好，还有你的教材教法。说服的手段，啊，所以当我们面对不呃面对家长，面对学校，你要如何去说服？啊，面对不同的孩子，你要用什么样的一个教材教法？啊，这都是很重要的一件事。然后再来就是气，啊，气呢是指一个好用的、很好用的工具。如果你能够在推展这一件事情的时候，找到一个。能够把你的效能最大化的一个终极的武器、终极的工具，让你简单的实施，然后就能够获得极大的效果。那你在推展这一件事情一定会非常的顺利。好，然后最后一个是势，那这个势指的是是呃环境、潮流跟时代的趋势啊。如果现在是一个推展 AI， 大环境都在讲 AI 的时候，那我们如果在这个时候去。推展 AI 这一件事情，那不管是在经费上，在呃各个单位的支持上，你一定可以获到获得最大的支持。那这个就是四。那不过呢，如果你要发展的东西，并不是在这个潮流上面，你就必须要有英雄造时势的一个方式。那这个东西比较困难，但是不是不可为。好、哦，那媒体是一个很好的方法。那所以这是一个呃，我们看待万物的、看待万事、万呃每种事情的一个策略。好，那在课程的教学上，呃，因为我是站在一个师培的角度去呃看待这些事情，所以我要设计一个师呃学校老师比较容易师做的，可以直接直达我们课纲核心的一个教材教法。那所以我们也发展了一个叫做素养六步。啊，将教学转化的六个步骤，那利用这六个步骤就可以很容易的将，呃，我们平常的科技课程能够结合我们课纲的核心啊，去去让学生有强烈的动机，然后呢，也可以把运算思维直接设计思考直接带到我们的课堂上，让学生在学这些呃，学这些儿童城市，学这些创客的。呃，三 D 列印啊，或是镭射切割，或是一些小专案的时候，他可以同时学到运算思维跟设计思考，然后学到团队合作，啊，然后学到创客教育的精神，然后也可以
学到自主学习跟后设认知啊，将来可以自己自我成长。那还有创造力的培育，这个就是我们六个步骤很重要的内容。好，那在这几年的推动历程里面，其实要成功还有很多很多的元素，比如说线上线下的社群，呃，这个非常的重要。呃，我们花莲为什么会那么成功？其实我们做了很多很重要的决定。那这些决定呢，呃，看似很厉害，那其实都是来自于线上线下社群老师啊、呃，各县市的重要人物的一个。一个交流啊，所以我们经常会在各种社团里面跟大家交流。那也由于我们花莲县将科技教育普及的远大目标跟坚定的信念，所以吸引很多的产官学的合作啊，包括各 S 四 A 协会、科丁联盟、PTWA 联发科教育基金会、广达基金会啊，还有一些国发国发会啦、趋势科技。电脑工会、国光啊、东华大学等，还有国内的各个各个创客的厂商，都会来跟我们合作互惠共好，啊，所以呃，像，所以包括 S 四 A 社团哈、啊、这些东西，呃，这些社群都非常的支持我们花莲的教育，给我们很大的协助。那所以之后我们有了能力之后呢，也去协助呃各县市的推广。啊，甚至是蒙古、缅甸的国际的推广部分，我们也积极的参加了 Maker Fair。那甚至有些呃产业、有些公司，它是因为在 Maker Fair 看到了学生的作品，非常的喜欢，然后接下来后来才投入这个创客产业。好，那在学校里面要去推动，呃，我是站在县的角度，因为我是花莲县的。呃，推动创客教育的主导人，所以在现场，在县长的一声令下呢，我们开始推动儿童城市跟创客教育的部分。那我分享两个例子哈，在呃，在自由民主的台湾，呃呃，而且那时候国小的科技课纲并没有约束啊，并没有任何的架构跟约束，那所以你要推创客教育要达到百分之百。儿童城市要达到百分之百，这是极其困难的一件事。那最后我用了两个策略来圆满这个任务。那呃，首先是我在脸书上面做了贴文哈。那贴文的内容是这样，我说明我们花莲县教育处有多么的用心，申请了各式各样的计划补助，那也协助学校培训了各呃各种技术的创客老师。都训练好老师的，那所以创客教育是国家未来的希望，儿童城市也是小朋友最重要的能力。那所以，如果你的小孩在学校没有上到这些课，那你可以跟学校要求啊。所以我是在花莲县所有的呃有家长、有社会人士、有老师的群组里面去抛了这些文章。好，那这个文章之后，当然我们也料想，料想到那个后果啊，因为我的脸书还蛮多人看，所以这文章呢，马上在花莲县受到关注啊，果然，呃，果不其然，第二天中午就有学校校长打电话来，啊，他说，呃，我们受到家长很大的压力，那请请我把文章给撤掉。那我嘴巴上虽然说好，但是还是以手边没有电脑的,的原因哈，坚持到半夜才把文章撤掉。然而，因为这个贴文呢，让学校开课的比例大为增加，好，这是第一件事情。那后来，呃，我们推广到最后呢，还是有百分之七哈，也就是呃九个学校几乎没有办法办理。那我们实际。呃，调查了他的原因，不外乎就是两两件事情。第一个，学校老师、校长太安定啊、哦，有的可能就是快要退休了，不想动。那第二个原因呢？呃，就是大部分花莲的学校是属于偏乡的学校，那因此在偏乡的流动率啊，老师的流动率太过频繁
。那所以，即使这个老师很努力的学会，但是呢，他可能下个学期又换到别的学校啊。所以，基于这两个原因，我们那时候在二零一八年始终没有办法做到百分之百。那于是，最后我们使出杀手锏。我们跟教育处长、跟长官商议，我们将这九个学校叫来教育处开会。那，呃，结果在开会的时候，当我报告完了县长的政策跟呃教育政策的坚持之后，我以为处长会扮黑脸去要求呃学那九位校长配合，结果校长啊、呃，结果处长扮白脸。非常的和蔼可亲，而且坚定的，一一询问，呃，校长是否需要我们智慧教育中心的帮忙。在软硬兼施的情况下，啊，校长纷纷表示可以帮忙，而且真正有困难的学校，我们也派了中心的助理老师南下去协助。啊，那甚至人员不够的部分，我们还邀请科丁联盟帮我们来，呃，做教学。所以。隔年，在二零一九年，我们的儿童城市的普及率在全县的一百二十五个学校都有开课，啊，就达到了百分之百。那除此之外呢，还有许多的呃很重要的策略，比如说将教材简化，找到更好的工具啊，去呃或者是研发教材的教法，补充教学设备，甚至教学设备不够的时候。我们还采用了漂移设备的策略，策略啊，其他的方式来处理，那这些都是呃很棒的，让可以让我们能够成功的一些方法。那我们也提供县里面，啊，提供全县老师的一个上课的架构，那这个是属于国小的。我们在低年级的部分，啊，提供了呃，就是不用电脑的，啊，不插电的一个科技。创客的概念啊，在教导他们运算思维跟设计思考的一些用游戏的方式去教导一些概念。那在中年级的部分，我们带入儿童城市跟创客教育、跟开放硬体的部分，还有雷切、镭射切割跟呃三 D 列印的部基础的学习。然后在高年级的部分，我们就会将呃重点放在 PBL 的课程。去学运算思维跟设计思考。Pishu Wing, sorry to interrupt. Uh, the the uh, can you wrap up in one minute? The time is up. Okay, okay. 好，那呃，这是呃，这个这一个这一招送给各位了哈。知识型，这是中国古代的学问哈。我们学习知道之后，就要去思考怎么样应用，然后真的去实施跟修正。好，那我的好那。所以，我相一直以来哈，我就相信各位，呃，如果找到对的愿景跟成功的规律，那离目标就离成功的目标就不远。那我的分享到此，谢谢大家。Thank you so much, Dr. Wen. That's very practical recommendation of the strategy. I really love the way you are you you are use this your strategy to help with the substitute teacher to bringing in him to to lead the classroom. Are with their the courage. Thank you so much. Very amazing. Very interesting issue. So our next speaker is、uh, the founder of Lead Education in Taiwan, Dr. Wang Yu. Dr. Wang, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Richard Wang. Uh, actually, I teach、uh, chemistry for university entrance examination from 1985 until now. So,、uh, about the maker,、uh, I think far away, far away from what I do now. But I want to share what I think、uh, about the、uh, science, technology, science education, and the, the rela relationship with maker.、Uh, uh, your microphone is muted. Sorry, so okay. I, I speak again, and uh, uh, I introduce myself. I'm Richard Wang, and、uh, I teach chemistry for university entrance ex examination 
uh, most of my students call me Wang Yu. Uh, I cannot uh, speak fluent English. So next, I will speak in Chinese. And uh, uh, at the beginning, I will introduce myself. My education from university to graduate is divided into chemistry, food and chemistry. 所以，呃，我本身的学习就是一个跨领域的一个过程。那刚刚有提到，我在一九八五年就教升学的补习班，到现在。所以，呃，我刚刚听到 Ted， 我们呃 ，Dr. 黄说，呃 ，Maker 希望告诉学生，呃，他们什么都能做，没有什么他们做不到的哦。那这个这样的概念哦。那但是在我过去的工作的呃这个场域里头，因为是个呃补习班，所以我往往说的是相信我，你就多高的分数都考得到。那这样的思维跟教学模式，跟现在推动的 Maker 其实是有一些呃，甚至是完全不同方向的。所以我觉得站在我的角度来提一些想法，也许可以给各位呃不同的呃思考方式。那我过去。呃，因为教学的需求，我在台湾创立了呃一个公司，用3 D 动画来描述自然科学的教学学习，同时也应用了 AR、VR 或者现在我们称它叫 XR 来辅助教学。那因为工作的关系，我这些研究这些产品的开发是聚焦在呃 K12 啊，就是 K12 的教育领域。那么。近年来，我也启动了 OMO 的系统来做远端的数位学习，强化能够互动，甚至能够用远端来带领科学实验。呃，因为这样，我带着这些 3D 动画跑的整个亚洲，从东北亚的日本、韩国到中国大陆，甚至到东南亚的越南、马来西亚都去过了啊、哦。然后也因为这样，我落脚在呃。越南的胡志明在那里，我也有六个培训学校，已经启动了六年。另外，我是一个上柜公司的老板，我的公司聚焦在软体的设计，也就是跟 FinTech 相关的软体设计。同时，我也是一个私立中学的董事长。这是我呃，很快的跟各位报告我自己。那么，呃，因为刚刚的说明，呃。大各位应该了解我的工作比较是在黑板、白板教学生怎么样考试。那我进入这个职场是1985年，那时候台湾这个补习教育非常的兴盛，因为大学不多，但学生很多。但从那时候开始，大学就变得很多了，学生也变得很少了。所以大家可以看到我的这个曲线，这个曲线看得出来。学生的人数是下降的，补教业的这个成长是迅速的下跌，所以，呃，我必须在这个环境之下去思考一些问题。现在先分享我在过去十年前我们就已经开发的系统，我必须在同时同时间教八百个学生或者更多，所以在教室里头，我们用四个摄影机。把整个黑板的内容呢，借着摄影机传递到电脑，然后经过投影机移动到各位看到右上角的照片，第二教室、第三教室，甚至第四个教室，这样子我才能够同时教八百个学生。我想大家都知道，升学补习班就是这样做的。那么一个所谓的有名的老师，他同时间教很多的学生。而学生聚精会神的上课，目的就是希望得到高的分数。那这样的教学行为，一没有互动，二没有自我思考或创新的这个机会。那更不要提说去思考说他们过去从小学到高中所学的，能够在生活上能够做应用。刚刚邱老师说，学习呢。其实是提高生活素养，以提高生活素养为核心，但是在我的工作上并没有做到这一点，所以我在呃十年前就开始思考，我能不能在
不断的告诉学生分数怎么提高之外，也能够用别的方式吸引他们对科学的兴趣，同时引导他们也能够参加一些像呃科学展览呐、啊，或者现在所谓 make 的这样的活动。不过比较可惜的是，我接触的大半是高中生。那高中生其实他们要面对的就是升学，所以这里我提出一点，这一点就是说，我们在小学带学生做创客、做 make 的时候，其实包括家长、包括学生都开心的学习，但是这里出现两个问题，一个是学习后如何把他们所学的东西回归到学理上，而不是沦为一个游戏。我这样讲可能不大对，但是。往往也看到一些孩子只是去玩，但没有收敛出学习该有的理论的架构。那当然，在小学的阶段，我觉得是 OK 的。可是当他们到国中或者高中之后，以台湾来讲，他们慢慢的把这些好玩的这个创客的这个活动呢，时间越来越少，因为他们必须面对升学的考试，必须拥有好的学校分数才能够升。升到比较好的高中或者比较好的大学，那这个问题就变成说，如何让我们从小推动创客的这样的思维呢，能够到国中、高中还能够延续，而却又能够让他们满足对升学的需求。那当然，刚刚我这个一个老师上四个班，有八百个学生，呃，以教学来讲，缺少的互动性。因此，到2020年，我们就开发了这样的 OMO 的系统。借着网络，我们可以一个老师，比方说在台北上课，其他的学生在别的县市上课，我们可以及时互动，可以及时问问题，可以快速分析学生的强项、弱项，同时给予他们建议。同时，我们可以借着屏幕上的表现，我们像这一次。在右上角的这个照片里面，各位看到我教的是2020年发生在黎巴嫩的一个这个很大的爆炸案。那这个爆炸案呢，其实是在贝鲁特港发生的。那爆炸的成分是硝酸铵。那么在这当中，我必须介绍贝鲁特港的地理环境，必须介绍黎巴嫩的宗教文化跟经济，也必须介绍硝酸铵的化学性质。所以其实。因为现在的线上学习 OMO 的系统已经越来越完善，我们可以借着这样的数位学习的方法，来达到台湾所谓的跨领域学习的概念。其实跟我们 Make 所要推动的精神也是一致的。我们必须把不同的学门，不是只有物理、化学、生物，甚至包括历史。包括地理都能够融合在一起，才能够激发学生做更多层面的想象。那么，这个是我过去，呃，这十几年来一直推动的。因为我教书教了三十年，总觉得不断的只是教学生把分数提高，虽然他们可以考上好的大学，但终究不是一个最正确的学习方式。那么，以台湾来讲。我想不止台湾，我刚刚所提的现象，据我了解，像日本、韩国也一样。我们现在人口红利比较好的是在东南亚的国家，那包括中国大陆，它的出生率也快速下降。那么，当我们面临快速下降的时候呢，教育产业应该如何面对？以我来讲，我的企业有呃，我们思考的解决方向不外乎是把它科尽量的科技化。尽量的国际化，尽量的多元化。那么，所以呢，呃，我用了许多的人力跟时间，还有老师，呃，从七八年前就开始开发这个3 D 动画的内容。当然，后来也植入了所谓的 VR， 让学生可以做沉浸式的这个学习。现在我用比较短的时间给各位分享各位一些画面。各位现在听不到声音，但是。我的影片是有声音的，虽然我的英文不好，但是我全程用英文授课的。这这一个影片我是全程用英文授课。那么我示范一个蛋放到酸里头，很快的蛋壳会产生二氧化碳，所以会很多恶心的泡泡出现。这些恶心的泡泡经过了一段时间，当蛋壳完全跟酸作用完之后呢，那么。
这个蛋就变成一个只有膜的这个画面，非常恶心，对不对？但是下一个画面慢慢的可不见了，它就变成了一个所谓的透明蛋。那这样的一个实验，其实学生都可以做，但是呢，做完之后呢，有没有去思考为什么？所以我又研发这些，全部都是我的老师、我的绘画、我的工程师帮我做出来的。我们全部都是靠自己的企业来完成这个3 D 动画。那么，靠着触控面板，把刚刚的科学现象，我们用3 D 动画来呈现。那老师就可以在这个画面里头。解释为什么这个会有蛋壳不见了，泡泡产生了。那泡泡是什么东西？它会让火焰熄灭，很可能就是二氧化碳。好，那么所以呢，其实我还有准备另外一些水果电池啦等等，带着学生透过网络操作的这样的影片。因为时间的关系，我就。呃，不再多说。像这个画面，我们可以看到相关的化学式，让学生不只会玩，而且真的有进入学术理论。好，那么所以这个部分其他的影片，今天我就不再往下播了哦。那么再往下呢，这是我们目前这个教育企业以我的团团队来讲覆盖的地方，包括呃整个亚洲几乎都去了，因为唯有国际化才能够知道各国的教学模式。能够调整我们的内容，以便适应整个亚洲的教育需求。那同时，我在越南有这样的一个机会。到目前，我们已经有五个自己的培训学校的，今年呃，明年计划推展到十个培训学校。那我们在这里头也把期待能够分享在台湾所研究的教学方法啊、教学心得，还有教学的科技，能够跟全亚洲，尤其跟我们东南亚的。这个老师、学生们来做分享。以上是我的报告，谢谢大家。Thank you so much, Dr. Richard. Very interesting approach of teaching. I really like the immersive learning tools, equipments that you have done. Um, the very interesting issue that you talk about about the measurement of the student learning and the way that they need to encounter with the difficult exam, the, the big exam in their life to proceed with the education. Thank you so much. Very wonderful information. So our next speaker from Thailand, from the National Science and Technology Development Agencies, we have uh, Dr. Apirat and Dr. Basu with us. They will discuss the how they manage the 150 maker space fab labs across the country and the issue that uh, come up with those uh, they are the, the management of, of those fab lab and other, the other relevant issue. Thank you so much. Let's uh, proceed with Dr. Pirat, please. Okay, thank you, Dr. Kitsachai. So, hi. Hi, everybody. I am uh, Abjati Diman, and I take responsibility for the fab lab Thailand. And today, I am going to talk about the uh, implementation of the fab lab in Thailand. So, let me start with uh, my workplace. Okay, Silinthorn Sai Home. Silinthorn Sai Home is uh, one of the national learning center for STEM activities. We work under the National Science and Technology Development Agency, or we call NASDA. Uh, the key pillars of the work that Silinthorn Sai Home is doing are training STEM for the teacher, uh, doing STEM camp for the student, and the de development of the curricula, the side content, the material, such as a book or multimedia. And of course, one of the most impactful learning center at Silicon Sai Home is the fabrication lab, an educational and maker space. Uh, in, the fab, in the fab lab, we provide essential equipment and tools for engineering skill development, including a 3D printer, a uh, laser cutting machine, hand tool, a uh, digital tool, and scientific instrument. So the key objective behind setting up the Fab Lab, including inspiring innovation, educating both teacher and student in engineering skills, facilitating design and fabrication using technical tools, and thereby 
uh, create the future opportunities for aspiring engineers and innovators in the upcoming Thai generation. Okay, and for sustainable development goal, it is really important that we do not only teach the children how to build a beach, but also we motivate them and inspire them to create the innovative ways to cause the river. It's like someone said that, uh, tell me, I will forget. Show me and perhaps I will remember. Let me do and I will learn. This is a hand-on activity that is what we always do in the fabrication lab. So uh, the project implement is start in uh, 2018. The Thai government set up the big lock project. The big lock project goal is to prepare the new generation to be uh, scientifically creative, uh, as well as more capable in using cutting edge technology. In this regard, NASDAQ has been uh, selected as the primary organization to implement fabrication lab in 150 high schools across the Thailand. In collaboration with the 10 universities, we set up the infrastructure. We offer the mentorship to both teachers and students and uh, empowering them to make the most of FabLab facilities and uh, unleash their full potential. So after uh, we having developed the capability of both teacher and student for approximately two years, we launched a national contest under the topic STEM project for sustainable development. This objective of this uh, national contest is to encourage the student to be an uh, innovative maker by using the fabrication tools to develop some prototypes that suitable for their community and uh, inspire them to develop their work by realizing and understanding their community problem. So on the way, on the way of formulating a project, students collaborated with their teacher, engineer, uh, and a member of the local communities with the aim to solve the community problem. Uh, furthermore, the contest can be con con considered as a new platform for enhancing their design thinking, uh, enhancing their engineering skill to apply for their community and well beyond. Students also have, a, have an opportunity to develop and practice scientific communication skills as well as building up the teamwork competency on the national stage. And that is what we do uh, in the era before the COVID. After that, we also have an activity and for the subsequent part, uh, I will let Dr. Wasuk provide an example of the teaching and learning activity within the FAB lab. So, Dr. Wasuk, please. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Atila, for providing us with a valuable insight into the management of FAB lab and SPDA. I'm Wasuk Kapalangsi from FAB lab and SPDA. As we move forward, uh, I I will now take the, the opportunity to elaborate on the excite the exciting and enriching activities that take place within uh, our fab lab. At the heart of uh, our fab lab are the enrich enriching activities we offer to students. As you can see from this uh, captivating image, students are active, actively engaged in STEM activities. This goes beyond textbook. It is uh, about hands-on experience where students conceptualize and decide 3D products. Their journey uh, doesn't end there. It evolves into the exciting process of bringing their creation of life through 3D printing. 
I would like to draw your attention to a particular STEM activity that exemplifies our approach, creating balancing toys through 3D printing. The project brings innovation, design, and technology. Students to not only learn about apply, uh, learn to only learn, but also apply their knowledge practically. Through this activity, we are fostering creativity and problem solving skills. Our commitment to inclusivity set us apart. The slide before you are uh, highlight our inclusive service, which empower our students, including those with disabilities, by leveling adaptive technologies and creating an environment of accessibility. We ensure that every student can explore and express their creativity without limitation. The image in this slide depicts a uh, process uh, of our fab lab, nettling educators through empowering workshops. We equip teachers with skills to craft learning media efficiently while embracing the illustrative design process. Educators grant insight into DIY 3D printing workshop evaluating technologies to enhancing teaching strategy. Our journal doesn't stop here. Let's look into the present day capability of our fab lab. This four pillar encompass our offering laser cutting machine, 3D printing, Scylla core AI Thai platform, coding and robotics. Lastly, our fab lab is built on the principle of invention. We foster an environment where creativity thrives, encouraging students and educators alike to explore and chart territories of innovation. Uh, as I conclude as a brief journal, uh, through our fab lab capability, I invite you to uh, embark to possibility that lie within this wall. Our fab lab isn't just a space, it's a realm of discovery where students and educators transform idea into liberty. Should you have an, any questions or wish to explore further, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Basu and Dr. Pirat for very informative presentation regarding the uh, implementation of the 150 uh, fab labs and makerspace in Thailand. I think we have a, a lot more makerspace uh, in Thailand than this 150, and we would love to see the, the collaborative work across all the makerspace, not only in Thailand, but for the region and connection to our Taiwan and the rest of the world as well. That's like our previous speaker said that internationalization is very important for the student to learn. Well, we have uh, some less than 10 minutes left for question and answers. So, well, I think we, uh, we would have time for, for about two questions. Well, uh, let's let's do it this way. So I'll, I'll throw up the first question and see are any speakers who would like to answer. You can just jump in and uh, provide the answer to the questions. Well, the first question that we talk about the partnership with the community. Well, I'm, I'm wondering how can you engage the communities to support the work of your fab lab, your makerspace, your maker educations, and who are the, those uh, partner, and how, the, what kind of strategy that you have used to engage uh, the, the, the partnership with those uh, organization or community? Well, uh, any, any speakers would like to, to answer those questions? Uh, Apilat, are, are your 
ready to answer? <laughs> Dr. Apirat, please. Who are, we talk about the partnership, who are the, uh, your, your partner, your supporting community, and how did you engage those partners? Uh, you still muted. Apirat, you still muted, please. Uh, st still, still muted. And you? Oh. Not, not sure. We, I cannot hear from you. Okay. 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 So maybe uh, let the doctor also maybe answer this question. Yeah. Okay. Doctor Wasu. Can we answer in Thai? Okay. In All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Joey, uh, can you use the AI to translate from uh -huh. Thai to to English? Okay, Doctor Kusacha, what what can I help? Uh, uh the, the speaker will answer in Thai. Okay. So please. Set sure. That no problem. Let me switch to the Thai. Right. For speaker. Please go ahead. Okay, just a second. Okay, please go ahead. Okay. Can you answer again, please? Uh, in the matter of collaboration, the matter of being in the same way with other people, or with with the community, that support the learning through the maker space. Now, in the case of Lab. Thailand ใช้ยุทธวิธียังไงบ้างหรือว่ามีพาร์ทเนอร์ยังไงบ้างนะครับในที่มีความร่วมมือกันในการเรียนรู้เกี่ยวกับเรื่องของแฟลแบบนี้ครับสำหรับค่ะแฟลแบบไทยแลนด์นะคะเรามีความร่วมมือกับมหาวิทยาลัยในประเทศไทยและค่ะเมเกอร์ค่ะซึ่งสนับสนุนทางด้านนักวิชาการและหลายประกอบกันแล้วเรามีหนึ่งร้อยห้าสิบโรงเรียนแฟลชแบบทั่วประเทศเป็นเหมือนศูนย์กลางเป็นหนองศูนย์กลางของแฟลชแบบให้กับอ่าทุกๆจังหวัดในประเทศไทยแล้วอ่าในปีถัดไปเราก็จะพยายามหางบประมาณและเครือข่ายทั้งในประเทศและต่างประเทศเพื่อมาสนับสนุนทางด้านหลักสูตรการเรียนรู้ให้ทันสมัยขึ้นทั้งด้าน AI ด้านโรบอติกค่ะแล้วก็ทั้งด้านการฝึกฝนคุณครูซึ่งเป็นหัวใจหลักของการทำงานแบบแบบไทยแลนด์เริ่มจากการเทรนเนอร์คุณครูนำความรู้ไปสู่นักเรียนครับผมสำหรับการนำแฟบแบบไปสู่ชุมชนนะครับตอนนี้เราก็จะอาติดต่อกับทางโรงเรียนนะครับเพื่อที่จะประมาณว่าให้โรงเรียนเนี่ยสร้างโปรเจกต์กับชุมชนนะครับโดยให้นักเรียนออกไปเซอร์เวย์ที่แหล่งชุมชนแล้วคอยถามเขาว่าเออมีปัญหาอะไรบ้างนะครับนักเรียนจะคอยรวบรวมข้อมูลเกี่ยวกับปัญหาในชุมชนเพื่อเอามาสร้างเป็นโปรเจกต์นะครับแล้วพอสร้างเป็นโปรเจกต์เสร็จแล้วก็จะจัดงานประมาณโชว์แอนด์แชร์เพื่อให้คนในชุมชนเนี่ยเข้ามาได้เห็นว่าเออเมเกอร์สเปซเราทําอะไรได้บ้างเพื่อชุมชนประมาณนี้ครับ Okay, all right. Thank you so much for a very comprehensive answer. Very interesting. You are engaged with the community. You are as the, the help from the universities, from, from researcher to support the knowledge and the helping with the, the, the uh, equipment the, that on the fab labs. And also you reach out to the community, all the school or school teacher to uh, support their, their learning of the fab lab. Very interesting. And well, let's see uh, anyone from uh, Taiwan would like to answer the question of how you engage the community in supporting your maker education and maker space of FabLab. Ati Chuen? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, about, uh, Thank you. Uh, 
。那呃，我们比如说，我们帮一些社群或者是企业导入，呃，让他们进入到教育的领域。那所以我们会呃帮他看看他们的产品适不适合用在我们的创客教育的教学上。那如果可以的话，那我们就会尽量去推广。那所以，同样的，我们有了这些工具、这些设备之后，我们就可以帮，呃，让学生学到更多的东西。那还有一些网络社群很重要。那我们的网络社群呢，呃，呃，跟全国都有联系。那所以我去参加很多网络社群，那同样的，我也会在里面贡献。那所以，当我有任何问题的时候，社群里面的老师们或者是伙伴们也都会来协助我们，所以这是一个全国合作的一个一个很棒的方式。那他们也会给给我们很多的相关的讯息，比如说哪里有资源啊，哪一个学校可以合作，哪些教授是呃在这个方面是很有方法的，可以帮助我们。所以呃，网络其实是一个很棒的线上。线下合作的一个方式，好，那产业也是一样，啊，我的回答到这边，谢谢。呃，谢谢 ，Thank you so much for a very practical answer for this this question. Well, let's see, our Professor Richard, you have any additional comment on this question? Um. 从大学的角度，呃，大学可以有很多的资源，那可以呃来协助跟地方的 maker space 来合作，啊、呃，但是在台湾大概都是以官方的资源来进行，那、呃、我们跟企业还有社区的合作，我们是属于产学产业跟学术的合作关系。那我们这样来进行研发跟推广，所以我们可以把我们在呃学术界研究的成果，然后提供给呃各中学、小学或者是呃地方的 maker space， 让他们去应用啊。所以我们是属于这样的一个合作关系。以上是我的说明，谢谢 ，Thank you。Thank you so much for the answer. Uh, well, we almost run out of time, so let me, Professor Richard, you have anything in addition? Uh, okay, thank you. Well, I'm very excited to see that these makers' creations will be connected to the enterprise level. That the schools, universities, primary schools, and small groups are actually in a continuous or consistent use. 没有像企业端那么强的应用性，像我的学校最近，因为台湾有一阵子没有下雨，所以呢，我们就试着去做能抗旱的稻，抗旱的稻米。这个米呢，哎，我们就试着用米来做各项的，比方说米制的吐司啦、米制的其他的点心等等。那这时候有成果了，我们就跟企业端合作，他们就开发成产品。那这样学生的动力就会存在，这是我的一个心得。谢谢。Thank you so much for a very comprehensive answer on that. Very useful for the answer for all of you. Uh, well, we are think we are now of time for our session today. Well, very practical and useful information from all the speaker today. We learn a lot about you how you manage the or the maker education, maker space fab labs. And how you engage a community with an open with the support from the community, and the, the result of the maker education was very impressive. We saw a lot of example of how students use the creativity to solve real world problem with the hand on approach. So maker education and STEM and STEM education are aligned together very well, and we could use the the approach to support. And with the engagement, with the support of the community, with the connection with all the makerspace across the world, we can learn from each other, and we can build, we can help strengthen the capability of the student to have the ability to have to build their character, 
to face with the challenge of the 21st century and the future. Thank you so much. Back to you, Dr. Orwan, our lovely MC. Thank you. I forgot to thank all the speakers as well. <laughs> thank you so thank much. Thank you, Dr. Krista Shai, for moderating the session too. And thanks to our speaker here today. I have learned a lot, and I believe that the audience here also uh, through the Facebook, they have learned uh, either the policy level or practical level in the classroom of Thailand and also uh, in Taiwan. Yes, so we can adapt and adjust into our classroom. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I think we are going to uh, uh, go to the last session. Yes, I would like to introduce and please join me to welcome that to Dr. Habiba Abdul Rahim, the Director of Civil Secretariat, to deliver the closing remark. That look, the floor is yours, please. Greetings, keynote speakers and distinguished guests. Thank you for such a fruitful session on maker and STEAM education. Maker and STEAM education is indeed profoundly important in a region as intensely developing as Southeast Asia. Maker education, as you know, is grounded in the principles of hands-on learning, creativity, and problem solving. It pushes for exploration, experimentation, and creativity fostering a need for in-depth understanding of issues at hand. STEAM education also infuses creativity into traditional subjects, enabling students to tackle real-world challenges holistically. Together, MAKER and STEAM education empower our youth to become the architects of innovation and change. Southeast Asia, while quickly developing and adopting the latest in technology, is still suffering from gaps in access to education. When speaking about maker and STEAM education, let us ensure inclusivity in terms of background, gender, social economic status, etc. Let us make sure that the widely known issue of lack of women in STEM is no more. Let us generate a diverse community of innovators and thinkers who contribute unique perspectives. Southeast Asia is also struggling to ensure that teachers have the most up-to-date skills. Meanwhile, our educators play a pivotal role in the transformation towards maker and STEAM education. Comprehensive training programs should equip them with the tools to facilitate experiential learning and nurture creativity in the classroom. Empowered teachers will ignite the spark of curiosity in their students. Another issue classic to education in the region is infrastructure. It is imperative that education institutions are equipped with adequate facilities in order to foster the success of maker and STEAM education. Modern labs complete with the right tools and technology must become the standard. Taking into account the immense diversity of the region, cultural relevance has been proven as the one factor that ensures sustainability of various initiatives including, I'm sure, maker and STEAM education. I always take the example of Muhammadiyah, one of the largest groups of schools in Indonesia that was founded in 1912. It was developed as locals wanted, local learning that was not provided by the colonial powers. It has stayed relevant for more than a century by continuing to provide such a solution for youth who are barraged with foreign influences through media and globalization. Moreover, Southeast Asia's diverse cultures on enriched maker and STEAM education by infusing local knowledge, traditions, and challenges into projects. This is especially relevant for CIMIO as we too have embarked on a number of programs that encourage problem-based learning which is similar to the principles of maker and STEAM education. Our CIMIO Japan ESD Award and CIMIO Singapore Students Challenge, for instance, are both encouraging students to come up with solutions to issues in their community. 
our teacher e-training series with the University of Tsukuba, Japan this year focuses on instilling mathematical thinking and problem-based learning in students. Certainly, University of Tsukuba also played a part in the formation of Simio STEM Ed's picture book program to teach STEM to the young. Ladies and gentlemen, integrating maker and STEM principles into the curriculum can create a holistic and seamless educational experience. Interdisciplinary projects can help students grasp complex concepts while encouraging them to think critically and creatively. Governments and educational institutions should collaborate to provide a policy framework that supports the integration and growth of maker and STEAM education. This includes funding, curriculum development and research initiatives. In conclusion, maker and STEAM education stand as beacons of innovation, creativity and problem solving in Southeast Asia. By embracing these approaches, we can empower our youth to become active contributors to the advancement of our societies, fostering a culture of innovation that shapes the future. Let us join hands in fostering an educational landscape that not only equip our students with skills, but also ignite their passion for learning and making a positive impact on the world. Thank you. On behalf of Smith Stemet, I would like to thank to Dr. Habiba for her closing remarks. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, may I call on your attention, please? Please bring your phone and then it's time to take a photo and join us for the photo campaign here. Please take your photo and then put a hashtag as Smith uh, Stemet AI webinar 2. This one is number two already. And if you are selected, you will get the prize there. That's true on our Facebook as well. Yes, today and yes, uh, right now it's the uh, time to end the webinar with another announcement that I'm so proud of. Yes, and may I have another uh, slide please for the e-certificate and evaluation. Yes, please scan here and then you will get your e-certificate within the 31st of August. I uh, will separate all the certificate to you. And I would like to make sure and to ensure that please add your active email, your name, your organization, and your country. And please double check before you submit the link. And right now, I think my team is already post this uh, QR code on the chat box and you can also click on the link and also on the Facebook as well. You can take a photo and also you can do it later on or you can complete by now. And the e-certificate will be sent to your email. Yes, please double check before you submit. Thank you. And also for the both uh, photo campaign and e-certificate, we will also post on our Facebook. You can follow us. And from the some participants that asking about the third webinar. Yes, I believe so. Our uh, office and senior STEM Ed, we will also organize the third one. It's coming soon. So follow us as our Facebook or website. And also I would like to make announcement here if you uh I don't, I would like to repeat and rewatch uh, this event. You can also access to our CMEO website. Yes, you can follow all the events there and rewatch this webinar as well. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a time to uh, end this webinar. I would like to uh, say goodbye and thank you to all uh, speakers, moderators, and also the audience here joining us uh, uh, in Zoom and also watching us uh, through the, the Facebook as well. And yes, uh, please join me to welcome our first senior song as a protocol. Thank you. See you next time. Thank you.
Shalom. 